Good morning. Welcome to the Milford Church of Christ on this beautiful Mother's Day morning. And this is our communion meditation. There's a story in the book of Exodus about the Passover and how God brought judgment on the Egyptians for not allowing the Jews to leave their enslavement. Passover is the name of the event and it is still celebrated by Jews the world over today. There's a traditional question asked at the beginning of each Jewish Passover celebration by the youngest child in the family. Why is this night different from every other night? In response, the family's father answers the question with the telling of the Passover story. What does that have to do with us today, Christians, at this communion table? Most of us realize that there's a link between Passover and communion. From the Gospels, we know that the Last Supper Jesus shared with his disciples was a Passover meal and that Jesus was crucified during Passover. But you may not realize that the connection between Passover and Easter runs much deeper than this. That communion and the events at the cross and resurrection are the fulfillment of Passover, as the Apostle Paul writes concerning all the events, ceremonies, and celebrations of the Old Testament. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. That's written by Paul to the Colossians, chapter 2, verse 17. The real meaning of Passover is found in Christ, and specifically in the events of Good Friday and Easter. From 1 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 7, I read, Get rid of the old yeast, so that you may be a new unleavened batch, as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. At the beginning of the Jewish exodus, the Passover lamb was killed, and hyssop branches were used to apply the lamb's blood to the top of the doorpost first, and then to the side post of their door. The blood was a sign upon the door directing the angel of death to pass over that home. Those inside were spared the ravages of death to any of their firstborn and lived. And to connect Passover to Christ, we need to remember that sin equals death. Our Passover lamb, Jesus Christ, has been sacrificed, and with that sacrifice, he carried the sins of the world with him. If we accept him as Lord and Savior, our sins were nailed to his cross as well. Forgiven, never to be remembered by God, forever. With that forgiveness comes eternal life with Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And all we must do is to have faith in the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, confess our sins to Jesus, repent, and be baptized. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this beautiful Mother's Day morning and the opportunity to be able to commune together, to remember Jesus, your only begotten Son, that gave his life on that Roman cross for the forgiveness of our sins. Father, we're thankful for the grace that we have because of that sacrifice that Jesus made. And we're grateful for the eternal life that you promised us through Jesus' resurrection. Thank you, Father, for all of our mothers as well. And may all these things be asked in the name of Jesus. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is a cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.